All right, so um, we just built the bare bones version of the, the block store, and I had to fix a couple imports, but um, but there we are. So let's go ahead and try it out. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. So uh, we are going to want to run the block store and then run the client. So I'm um, in order to find the block store to run it, we're going to go into target. There's this directory called surf store, and there's a, a bin directory, and, and here's a couple different uh, commands we can run. And I have put a um, <clears throat> configuration file here at the top level. So let's go ahead and run that. So we're going to go into um, uh, so target um, surf store bin run block server and let's give it the um, centralized config. Okay, so we've just go ahead and get, gotten this started and uh, let me rename my window here block. Okay, so it's listening on port 7183. Okay, I'm going to create another window uh, using this Tmux program, and let's run the client. So, here we target, uh, surf store, bin, and run client, uh, configs, centralized. And let's see what happens. So now we've actually connected to that server, but we haven't actually implemented the functionality yet. Okay, so we went ahead and connected, we select successfully pinged it, and then it failed. But that's not a problem because we haven't, it, in a sense, the assertions should have failed at this point. So where did it actually fail? It looks like it failed at uh, client.java line 83. So let's go and see um, what that is. Line 83 is right here. So if you remember, we sort of created two blocks and we ensure that they weren't there when the system started. Those both passed. We then stored a block and now we need to ensure that, that it is there. But we haven't implemented as uh, has block yet, so that's why it failed. Okay, now if we go back to um, our block store, we can see that some of the calls that have occurred. Okay, so now let's implement that, that block store part. Okay, so uh, in order to implement that, we are going to um, edit our Block store to Java, scroll down, and let's go ahead and implement store block, get block, and has block. Uh, this actually shouldn't take more than just a couple minutes. So the first thing that we need to do is we have to actually store our data somewhere. Uh, so let's go ahead and add a, an instance method to our, um, here we are down here. So we're going to go ahead and add an, uh, an instance method to this, um, this particular class that will hold our information. So uh, let's do that here. Um, we might want to say protected. Uh, let's create a map and let's see, it's going to map a hash value to, let's say, the, the contents of the, the block. And we'll call that block map. You could also map that to an actual block object if you wanted to. Either one would work. Uh, we're going to need a, um, a constructor. And let's see, what should that do? Probably just initialize that uh, that map. Well, we have to give it a particular type. Let's call it a hash map. And it's just going to start empty. Okay, so far so good. Uh, while we are at it, we'll go ahead and add um, our uh, add some classes for what we just did. Okay, great. So, so now we have this block map sitting around. Uh, let's go ahead and use it. So what happens when it's time to store a block? Well, before we just kind of took the request, printed out this message, and, and ended it. Uh, but if we actually wanted to store something, uh, let's see, well, we've got our block map, and to add an entry, we're gonna first put the key, and then we're gonna put the value. Okay, so what is the key? Well, it's just the hash value as a string. And uh, what's the, the value? It's going to be the, the contents of the data, which would be this. And if you remember, that returns a um, uh, that returns like a byte string. And in order to um, we could sort of look at the 
the Java doc there, and there's a, an option to create a byte array. So now we've done it. We've just stored the hash value. We've stored the data. Let's go ahead and, and return the response. Well, we're done. Okay, so we just finished store block. What about uh, get block? So here we just built an empty block and we returned it. We probably want to do something other than that. Uh, so let's see. Let's go ahead and grab the contents of that block. And get is going to take a string, which is just the, the hash value. Okay, great. So now we have our data. And we're going to have to uh, put that in this block. Well, the builder, there's a couple ways we could do that. We could instantiate a builder and add the methods and then call build, or we can just chain them together right here. So uh, let's see, we could say, um, okay, so now we've got this, uh, call this builder. Excellent. Okay, builder dot, uh, let's see, what are the things we need to do? Well, we need to set the data and um, we're, we have this nice method that will create a byte string from a, a byte array. And then we have to set the hash value Now we could have recomputed it here, but hopefully those are the same value. And then finally, there. Okay, all right, on to the next one, or the last one is has block. So for has block, what we really just care about is figuring out if this data is already in the system. So uh, that should be a simple matter of creating the answer. Uh, is just looking it up in this map. So there's contains key, just takes the key. And now instead of always returning false, we're going to return answer. Okay, I think that is it. Uh, we're going to have to add a couple other imports. If we were to try to run this, it would it would crash and or the, the it wouldn't compile, and uh, we would be able to look at the uh, output and realize that we need to import something. Uh, there's block, simple answer, hash map. Okay. All right, then. So let's go ahead and uh, run our compiler. And hopefully that will, that will build.